Hello everyone, my name's Emily. I have read 77 books this year so far in 2024 and I'm going to tell you whether or not they're worth it. For the sake of time, I'm going to try to keep each book to 20 to 30 seconds long because we don't, I don't think we need a 77 plus minute video for this, but if you'd like one, let me know. I can definitely do a long review if need be. But without further ado, let's get into it. Follow me on Storygraph and Goodreads so you can get all the updates there first at Dietitian EMK. But let's start with the first one. So I started my year off rereading the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So let's just fly through those. We got a solid five to start. So we're going to start with The Lightning Thief, a classic. Cannot go wrong. If you haven't read Percy Jackson at this point, what are you doing? First one, 10 out of 10, recommend. Let's move on to The Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan, part of the Percy Jackson series. This one was a good refresher. A little bit, some spicy moments. Grover in a wedding dress. Get more of that water feature. Since Percy is the son of Poseidon. If you haven't been spoiled by that at this point, I can't, I can't help you. It might be too late for you. Anyway, let's move on. Next one, we got The Titan's Curse. We got our, our Hunters of Artemis in this one. A major character comes back. We'll keep that spoiler free. But there was a little bit less Persebeth in this one. Sad, but still such a fun ride. Also there are Pegasi. We love the Pegasi. Keep reading. <laughs> kind of a similar thing with the entire series. We move on to the Battle of the Labyrinth. Lots of drama going on in this one. This one was like kind of, I forgot how complicated it was and how many plot twists there were, but I feel like this one doesn't get a lot of love potentially because of the drama. But you know what? It was a fun read. Let's move on, 10 out of 10. And the last one was The Last Olympian, a classic. Everything's leading up to this. This might be my favorite. This one and Lightning Thief are tied for my favorite of the series, but such a fun read. Wow. Let's move on. Next book I read was the Akatar series. So the first one was A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I I don't even want to give like more than 20 seconds of my time to this. I don't support Sarah J. Mass. I was so annoyed by how much these books have been pushed everywhere and i was like let's just read it and see what it's about the first one was very bland i think the only the last 50 seconds were exciting and it doesn't help that sarah j mouse is problematic so the entire time i was just thinking about that anyway next one court of mist and fear it's a second book of the series i think this is the best one of the series it's the most exciting i hate my two complaints were how much the word male and mate were used I don't know, it was not, I was like, take a shot every time, but don't cause you'll die. Let's move on to the next one. Third book of the series, Court of Wings and Ruin. This one was fine. No wait, that's not the third one. The next, I think the next one is A Court of Frost and Starlight, sorry. Sorry, that's on me. This is like the like holiday special. I thought it was very boring. I was bored, moving on. Court of Wings and Ruin, lots of dramatics, kind of wrapping up this series, but like not, it's still going. I'm confusion, but it was fine. And then the next one was A Court of Silver Flames. This is Ness's book. I liked this book. This is probably controversial because people don't like Nessa, but I think she's a complicated female character that a lot of people that only want to see the happy characters find happiness like that. I don't really care for Cassian, but I just like Nessa. But then, you know, we're gonna end it with, um, what ends up happening to her is just like, wow, I don't know if this is the feminist movie you think it is. Anyway, the next two we're counting on the Goodreads because we count these, because I counted the series towards my book count. So you know what, these counts as two books, a series. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Next book, Broken Flames by M.K. Ahern. Also, sorry if I keep looking over here. I'm literally going through my list. Like, what did I read? 
This was my first ever arc, you guys. It was kind of an inspired story. The dedication is like if Zuko and Katara ended up together, which I am like, a strong Zutara shipper. So this was great. It was so exciting to get my first ever arc. I think there's a lot of room for development with the ring style and the plot development, but it was fine. Our next one, Dreamland by Nicholas Sparks. This is controversial. I'm about to put myself out there. If I DNF a book, I still count it toward my red goal. Controversial because technically I read part of it. I'm not gonna force myself to read a book I don't enjoy. It's like a waste of my time. Like don't force yourself to eat foods that you don't like. Same exact concept. And technically I read part of it. You know what? We're gonna count it toward my book goal. I don't know. This was a book I literally started a week, a week and a half, a year and a half ago with my first book club. And since then the book club was not met, so like I'm not really motivated to read it. Also it was very dry and slow and I'm like, I'm not into this. Let's DNF it. Next one. One, two, three, four. The next six actually are all little short stories from Better Than The Movies, Wes and Liz. So we have like, we have Wes and Liz's like college road trip. We have the better than the prom, the prom scenes. We have kind of like some other stories leading up to the sequel and then other stories from backgrounds of Wes. I just love them so much. I'm so ready for the sequel. Next book I read was Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Listen, Bride got some interesting reviews. I loved it. I, okay, maybe this is exposing myself. I never got to the Omegaverse on Wattpad or AO3, so maybe I just haven't had my Omegaverse experience yet. I feel like I shouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did. I also like Ally Hazelwood's writing a lot. Moving on, next one was Betting on You by Lynn Painter. And then I also read Better Than Before by Lynn Painter. Okay, honestly, I'm looking at this now and I couldn't tell you the difference between these two books. Betting on You was the one, okay, Betting on You was the one where they they like made a bet about their friends who were gonna hook up. But then I didn't like it. Let's, clearly it's not sticking in my head enough. I didn't like it very much. Better Than Before could not tell you at all what this was. So I, maybe that just says it for itself. Let's move on. Unravel Me My Becca Mac. I don't think I cared for. I feel like there's so much hype around her. Like, I think she's hockey, hockey romances. And I want to like them, but like, I feel like there just are these weird misogynistic undertones in a couple of her books and her writing style. And I can't get past that. Moving on, Butcher and Blackbird. Spoiler alert, Butcher and Blackbird was my first ever YouTube book review. Woo! So go watch that video. I liked it a lot. It's a serial killer ex serial killer romance. Quite graphic. So definitely check out the trigger warnings first, but what a time to be alive. Next one. I added this because I was pissed. This is during the era of when all the Dramine fan fictions were getting taken down by AO3 because people have no chill and they don't understand that you can't sell other people's work. Like people were selling PDFs and like bound versions of Manacled and Secrets and Masks and I think maybe the auction. So in my theory, I reread Manacled because I probably haven't read it in like two years or so. And I was like, wow, this is such a good one. I end up downloading it so I can have it because it's now taken down. And this is why we can't have nice things. Stop selling other people's work. Like fan fiction's free. Fan fiction, there's a very th fine line already and we are pushing it. Let's not mess up what we have people. Anyway, moving on. The Fake Out. This was a pleasant surprise. It was a hockey romance. And I will note there was a lot of advocacy around, I think it was maybe, it was something with relationship with food. And I think body neutrality. 
the romance was great but from a dietitian standpoint i was like wow they're handling these topics really well shout out to them shout out to stephanie archer you go girl moving on hue blue i've seen this a lot on tiktok and i'm like let's get around to it and people are like oh you'll be sad and i read it and i was just mad i could not stand the male main character sticking out to me the most but like i would not recommend anyway it's not a happy romance i don't know what i would define this as maybe like la la land if Ryan Gosling's character was an a-hole? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Next one, The Fake Mate by Lana Ferguson. Guys, I'm, I'm experiencing the Omegaverse. Just, just let me have this right now, okay? I didn't go through that. I didn't have that on my Wattpad in AO3 days, okay? Why did I like this so much? Also, this did not how, go how I thought it was going to be. What a weird world we're living in where Omegaverse is getting published. Anyway, I liked it. It was fun. Let's move on. Next one's a Long Game by Elena Armas. Armas? Amars? Amar? I didn't care for it. I think it's, I remember it's some, a soccer romance. Oh, I remember it now. There is like, it's kind of a, like a, what am I thinking of? Yeah, so we had a beach day today and I think the sun brain, the sun, all my brain cells are gone essentially. The sun flamed them up, burned them out. There's supposed to be this like weird conflict between the two. The guy's like teaching all these kids, I think this is the right book, teaching all these little girls how to play soccer and the other girls like being punished because she had a PR issue and now she has to go work with him to like make this team of little girls good at soccer. I don't know. I just remember like there was just so much like anger and it wasn't even tension. It felt like genuine disinterest between the two and then when they finally got together, it was like, I don't know if that makes sense. Let's move on. <gasps> you guys, why has no one been talking about this? I think I'm 10 years late, potentially. The Renegades trilogy. Okay, one, the female main character is half Filipino. Okay, moving on. It's essentially about this girl who's seeking revenge on these heroes, also known as like renegades, because they weren't able to save something related to her family. Slash, there was like an incident where like they are very mighty, but they were not able to do what they were said to do. So essentially she's like a villain, but goes in under disguise. You guys, it's, it's so good. I will note it's a little confusing because there's like, they all have like superhero or like villain names and then they also have their own names and there's so many characters. So it's like, who are all these people? What's going on? But like by the second book, you'll have it down. It's so good. Arch Enemies was the next book. So good. And Supernova was the last one. I think the third book was probably my least favorite. I gave it four stars. I gave the other two five. This series is just so freaking good. I could not recommend it enough. Moving on, Thalia DeLuca. I think this was just one of those like, one of those books you see on TikTok and they like quote one page and I'm like, yep, let's read it. And I, I think it's a maybe a mafia romance, I believe. I'm really, you guys, I have not, I have not reviewed any of these books. I'm literally going off of memory right now. And I remember it was not good. I was underwhelmed, moving on. Our next book, I, I did a video on this. Watch the full review, Mr. Fixer Upper by Lucy Score. I think this was the worst book I read this year. I DNF'd books this year. I finished this one. 
I didn't even DNF it. I finished it. And I think it was the worst one I read this year. It was just so much misogyny and like not, it's not a good example of a healthy relationship in my opinion. It has great reviews on Goodreads, so who am I to say, whatever. Moving on, our next one, I also did a YouTube video guys on, you guys subscribe to the YouTube. We can talk all day about books. I hope this doesn't find you by Anne Liang. I need all of Anne Liang's books injected into my veins. This is an academic rivals to lovers. This girl vents out. She's like very much a people pleaser, wants to keep the peace, wants everyone to like her, but she vents all of her feelings through emails and all the emails accidentally get leaked. And she, you can imagine she has a lot of nasty emails to her rival. This book has the same level of cuteness as better than movies. I'll die on that hill. You need to read it. Also Asian representation. Get on it. Because I was in an Anne Liang phase, I then went on to read This Time It's Real. This is, uh, there's like a fake relationship this time. It's about some girl who like writes about love and she's a really good writer and people are like, oh, who's your inspiration? She pretends she's in a relationship and now like people are like, oh, let's meet him. And now she has to like find someone. It's so cute. It's literally so cute. You, Anne Liang, I'm so glad I discovered her because now I will be reading every single book she comes out with. Also, she's having a new, I think a fantasy book come out soon. It's like a spy book, but there's romance and a war, maybe? I would cry for an arc of that. I'd literally probably burst into tears. One can dream. Next one, if you could see the sun. This book's so funny. It's another like academic rival. Anne Lang has academic rivals down. I'm making her the queen of it now. I think I've only read two books of hers that have that. She does it so well. But it's about this girl that can suddenly turn invisible and she like has people pay her to like do things since she can turn invisible. It's such an interesting concept. I was like, at first I'm like, is this supposed to be like realistic? But I'm like, no, people, people can't turn invisible. I'm like, you're so silly. Let's move on. I think this was my first reread of the year. I got into a reading slump, so I need something to get me out. And it was a good reading slump because the books were just so good. I was like, what can match up to this now? Like I literally read like Renegades and then Anne Liang's books so close together. I'm like, that's the peak of writing we're gonna read this year. Everyone wrap it up. But I read Spearcrest Prince by Aurora Reed. I really like the Spearcrest series. Well, actually I'll say I really like one of the books. And this was one I, it was my second favorite. But then I just reread it and I'm like, this is more of a bully romance than I thought it was. My standards have definitely changed over the past four years, forgive me. But it was, at least got me out of my slump. Next one was another reread Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I do own this one right up here. This is a, like a Peter in the Pan kind of fantasy inspired, but it's about Hook. I really liked it the first time. When I reread it, I'm like, hmm, I don't know, Emily, but it was dramatic. That's for sure. Let's move on. How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kuang. I think this is the best book I read this year so far. It's a romance and it's adult romance. It dives into all these deeper topics and there's a lot of like hurt and they like knew each other from a younger age. There's a tragedy that like drew them apart. But then they have like something forcing them to work together again and now they have to work out their differences. So well done and it feels so realistic. That's something I emphasized so much when I read it. It felt very real and it wasn't some like fluffy, like, oh, we're gonna just get over all our problems. No, it was, it was so well done. Moving on, Powerful by Lauren Roberts. I just, I need Reckless right now. I'm unwell. Ever since I read Powerless last year, I'm like, show it to me, Rachel. I read Powerful, this is a Dina story. Honestly, I forgot who Adina was until I reread this. It was fine. I didn't really care for it. The 
pacing was so quick. Okay, I found this on the web for pacing was so quick. Check it out. No, thank you. I just didn't care for it. Let's move on. Next one, Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I assume that's how you say her last name. I don't think it's Jimenez. I'm pretty sure it's Jimenez. I could be wrong. I'm so sorry. A lot of people are raving about this book. I was very frustrated. There's a lot, it's a romance, but there's like a lot of discussion about like parenting, neglectful parents, kind of managing that. And maybe it's because I'm just not like the main character I didn't enjoy as much. I didn't really like how it wrapped up. It was fine. I don't know if it deserves the hype. It is definitely sad and darker. So read the trigger warnings first. But it was fine. Next one, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I'm in a new book club called the Paper Pack Pals Book Club with a couple of my friends. And this was the first book. I also chose this book because I feel like thrillers are good for book clubs. I get scared easily. I should really stop doing this to myself. Literally like the book we're reading right now, Tender as the Flesh, I had a nightmare and I have not re read it since the nightmare, so. That's good. Sharp Objects. It was definitely very suspenseful. There were a lot of like, what is happening, WTF moments. There was one detail that as soon as it happened, I was like, I lost all respect for the main character. If you wanna know and you wanna get spoiled, go read my review on Goodreads or Storygraph, but I didn't care for it. Next one, this is gonna make people mad. Thrown in Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Remember when I said that I count DNF books as my reading goal? I DNF this one. I was, it was in my currently read bookshelf for two and a half months. She needs to chill out with the exclamation points. I did not care about any of the characters. I could not get into it. I was like, it's been two and a half months. I'm not finishing this at all. Sorry, honey. Next one, Clee Cute. This might be my first lesbian romance book. Why have I not read more? I don't know. Honestly, I could not tell you, but I'm trying to, I'm working on it, guys. I'm trying to read more <laughs> diversity. This book was so cute. It's also inspired by soccer players, and I love soccer, and it has the U.S. Women's National Team in it, and I love the U.S. Women's National Team, and their, their the U.S. Women's National Team is literally like the pride icons, allies, and this book was so cute and so fun, and I had a great time reading it. I was like, wow, and I also love soccer. Such a fun time. Moving on, our next one, Emily Henry, Funny Story. One of my most anticipated reads this year. I love Emily Henry. You can't see it, but at the top. Hold on, let's, let's scoop up here. I own all of her books. And Funny Story I was so excited for. I wouldn't say Funny Story was my favorite, but it still was a very interesting romance about two people who get broken up with and their exes get together. That's why they were both broken up with. Very interesting, very reflective. Love Miles and his Crocs. Also, Daphne's a little librarian. So fun. Moving on. I gotta pick up the speed, you guys. Okay, we're almost there, I promise. I promise. Next one, King of Salon by Anna Huang. Another most anticipated read of 2024. I really enjoy Anne Huang's books. This was a huge miss for me. I made a full review about it. If you wanna watch a video, check it out. I thought the characters were not like themselves. The plot was incredibly boring. I was snoozing, sorry. The cover's cute though, let's move on. All Roads Laid Here by Mariana Zapata. I've been, this one has been in my currently read list for nine months? No, maybe four. I don't like the characters. And then I read the reviews because I knew I wasn't gonna finish it. And that just gave me the positive reinforcement I needed for DNFing this book. 
Also, ever since I saw how Mariana Zabata wrote about some Filipino food and the representation of that, I like she has a little bit of a stain on her name and that makes me really upset. Google it, Reddit it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Moving on, I finally finished the intuitive eating book. This one took me three years to read. I felt like since I'm a non-diet dietitian, I should have read this book. And now I can say I've done it. It was good, not great. I kind of already knew that based off of it being written by two thin cis white women. But you know what? It's better than the fat phobic healthcare system we have today. A step in the right direction, but not the finish line. Let's move on. What did you do by Janine O'Reilly? I, this was one of, this is a sequel to that book that blew up last year on Book Talk because that one girl's reaction to what did you do? This was a mess. I was appalled by what I read. It did not have the same level of complexity and stimulation as the first one. It was like shock factor after shock factor after shock factor. I'm like, does this even make sense? I feel like you're just trying to like get the same reaction as the first book now. Sorry. Next one's Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. This was our second book of the paperback book clubs read it's a kylo ren fan fiction i didn't even know that how fun it's about a florist and a wedding planner it's a double double chance second chance romance so much angst call me toxic but i like the angst and then when they got together i was bored call me toxic i know i am next one i had to read it you guys the bad boy golfer has been haunting me Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I just had to read it. I didn't know what was going on. It was fine. I didn't like the guy. I didn't really like the girl. But I had to read it for that bad boy golfer aspect, you guys. And then this is when I was like, wait. I need more spy family content. And I had been holding off on reading the manga for so long. And I was like, this is my moment. So I read volumes one through... 13 and then I counted a couple of the collections toward my regal, you know stellar 10 out of 10 five stars show stopping earth shattering mind shattering earth turning table flipping chair swapping wow I love this manga and this show so much I'm so excited for it to keep coming out Moving on, we're almost there. When Breath Becomes Air by K Paul Kalan Kalanthi Kalanth. I'm so sorry, Paul. R.I.P. This is about a neurosurgeon who finds out he's terminal lung cancer. So you can. It's a nonfiction. You can get the energy from this. I thought I wasn't gonna cry. I truly didn't think I was gonna cry. Yeah, that's all we have to say. Moving on. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This has been on my TBR for so long. It is kind of an Alice in Wonderland inspired book. I support women's rights and I support women's wrongs. That's all I gotta say. I just want Kath to be happy. Love her. Also, she's, I think she's supposed to be the Red Queen. If that helps. We're not gonna give any spoilers, but it's good enough it's on the shelf, you guys. Good enough that's on the shelf. Moving on, Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. One of my friends recommended this to me. At first I was like, it's about, I think it was advertised to me as like this octopus helps this woman figure out how her son died. And I'm like, what are we talking about? Are they gonna talk? And it was a little bit slow to get into, but like once the pieces started coming together, there's like the octopus and there's the woman and there's these other characters. You get like multiple POVs, which is like super fun because like all these th people know different things and it's just kind of you seeing everything slowly come together. Did you like that? That wasn't as cool looking as I thought it was, sorry. I was sad. You'll know why I was sad, but it was good. Next one was Not In Love by Allie Hazelwood. This might be my favorite Allie Hazelwood book of all time, of all time, because it was so different and she's trying different things with her books, 
which I'm so excited about. I love it. And there was one of the biggest things, honestly, the reason it was my favorite is because there's such a strong discussion about food insecurity. And as a dietitian, yes, more representation and chat about this and discussion about this. I thought she handled it really well. The romance was super fun and I had a great time. Read the trigger warnings first. Next one was Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. Did she release two books in one year? When did Butcher and Blackbird come out? Leather and Lark was a disappointment, I will say, compared to Butcher and Blackbird. I just didn't care about the characters. The whole setup for like the relationship was odd. I feel like there are some questionable things that are happening with these trigger warnings and I was kind of like, oh, why are we doing this? I already got scarred enough with ice cream from the first one. This is nasty. Please don't. Anyway, it was just a disappointment. I'm sad. I'm probably going to still read the third one. And then the last book I've read so far, you guys, Amart, was Love and Written by Lauren Asher, another highly anticipated read. This was a very interesting romance. It's about this dad. It's kind of focused on the, the dad and his relationship with his kid. And then the nanny is a love interest. It's a long book and I feel like there was a lot of like push and pull about the same exact arguments over and over and over again. And like at this grown age, communicate better they're older than me <sighs> anyway it was fun the cover is cute not my fave though and that's all the books i read this year so far guys wow that's crazy i'm 77 percent done with my goal only gotta read 23 more books this year this was fun i think i'm over my time i don't think i or maybe i'm right on it is the math right 20, 30 seconds per book. I might be on it. I don't know. Anywho, let's wrap this up. Thanks for watching today, guys. Let me know how far you are in your reading goal. Let me know if you are making a reading goal for this year. It's never too late. You can, I think at one point I made a reading goal in like September. You can make one whenever you like. I also recommend using story graphs as well because they challenged me to diversify my reading. So that's super fun because I always want to challenge myself there. We can absolutely do an end of the year review, but this was so fun. Like this video if you had a good time, helps me out a lot. Comment below if you read any of these, what your thoughts were, if you have any recommendations for book reviews I should do next. Comment below just your thoughts. I want to talk about books all the time, you guys. Let's chat about it. And then if you liked what you saw, you want more book content, with this summer coming up, there's gonna be a little bit more travel and hiking content, but we're gonna keep the book content going. Don't worry, you guys. I'm also gonna challenge myself to maybe post twice a week, once a month. We'll see how that goes, but this was fun. Had a great and dandy time. Had the best time with you guys. And oh, if you do subscribe, turn, turn on bell notifications. I always forget to do that, but then you'll get notified every time I upload a video. But this was so fun. Let's do it again next week. How about that? Have a great day. Read all the lovely books. I got my, own, my first pub. You guys, okay, quick thing before I let you go. I got my Chicago Public Library library card finally. It's over for everyone. I'm so excited. All right, I'll let you go. Read more books. Use your libraries, thrift books. Support authors that are not problematic. And we'll have a great time. All right, bye.